RTS is a dead genre. At least that's what everyone has been saying for the last 15 years. They've said that RTS is too difficult to break into, that it's too hard, that it's too difficult to make a good game, the communities are too demanding. But that wasn't always the case. Eons ago, many developers wanted a piece of that StarCraft and Warcraft cake. As such, there were many attempts and many failures. As a kid, though, I had no idea of reviews and good timings. I just played what was given to me, and so that got me wondering. What happened to those old RTSs that I played as a kid? Are they even still playable today? Was there ever a competitive scene for them? And how do they hold up by today's standards? Well, join me as we take a bit of a deep dive into the world of dead RTSs. <laughs> Now you may think, oh, Ollie, we're going to look at the classics like the old Command and Conquer games and maybe even the original StarCraft. You've mentioned that before on the channel. No, my sweet summer child. I grew up in an age where, well, video games weren't big and so people didn't really know what was good and what was bad and really what was popular. So I was only ever able to get what my parent gave to me. And for me... That was not really the peak of RTS genre. Let me introduce you to Army Men RTS. Yes, do you remember these little green plastic Army Men figurines? No? What do you mean you weren't alive during the 90s? Okay, well, that's... Anyway. So basically these little plastic toys, we got these green ones. Now, I'll be honest, even when I was a kid, they were a little bit of a relic of a bygone era. Back in like the 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s to a degree, kids would get these little wooden uh, toy soldiers that they could then use and play out battles and stuff. And in the 90s, plastic existed. And so um, these little green plastic toys got sold and they were sold in supermarkets or tour shops and all these sort of things for very cheap. Um, they were a weird mix because they were child friendly, because they were little plastic toys, but they also had like guns and stuff. So, you know, a real interesting mix. Anyway, in the late 1990s, 3DO was founded, a game studio from California founded by former EA staff. Their original intention was to try and enter the uh, game's hardware market to try and compete with such things as the Dreamcast or the NES system. After they failed with that, they transitioned into becoming a third-party game studio, creating uh, a whole plew of games, mainly including the most notable, uh, Might and Magic, which would later become the Heroes of Might and Magic series, and, of course, the Army Men games. Army Men was by far the company's biggest hit partly through some dumb luck of the little plastic toys being featured in the completely unrelated Toy Story films, but also the games did manage to strike a perfect balance. Older kids were interested in them because, well, it had guns and warfare, and parents would buy them for their kids because that's little plastic toys. It isn't real guns or shooters like Call of Duty and the modern warfares of games of today. As for adults, though, the games kind of suck. Generally, they were reviewed at around 56% according to what few reviews still remain on the internet today. Part of that was clearly due to the turnaround of the games. I mean, look at this. This is all of the games they released between 1998 and 2002. That is 19 games. 19 games in 4 years, that is insane. You also might notice that right at the end of the list is today's topic game, Army Men RTS. All of the previous Army Men games were top-down strategy games involving you controlling a very small group of units, fighting enemies whilst progressing through a story. The style of gameplay was very reminiscent of RTS at that time anyway, so the progression here was not insane. In fact, a much more successful RTS had become very popular with adults in the last couple of years. Of course, that's the original StarCraft. Now, this was 2002, and you've got to understand that the adult gaming market was not anywhere near as big as it was today. On the other hand though, gaming was really big with kids. The SNES, the GameCube, 
first Xbox and even the PS2 were all out at this point and had cemented gaming as a viable growing market. 3DO knew this and were going at it hard. A lot of these army men games that I'd previously shown you were released on the Game Boy or Game Boy Color or even the Game Boy Advanced, and were also released on other major consoles such as the GameCube, PS2 and on PC. Army Men RTS, on the other hand, attempted to bridge the middle ground between being a game that was played by adults and children by giving a more simplistic approach to the RTS genre. Now as a kid, I remember loving these games, and comments online seemed to line up with that. If people played these games as kids, they enjoyed it, but if they played as adults, not so much. Reviews online for the game seemed middling to lacklustre at best, but a lot of that was also due to it being released on PS2 and GameCube, and a lot of the reviews being for those versions of the games. The PC version was actually pretty decently reviewed, and I think would have performed better if a certain other RTS wasn't released just four months later. Yep, Army Men was released in March of 2002, and Warcraft 3 was released in June of 2002. A game still played today, a titan in the RTS industry, released just months after army men had had their shots. A doomed timing to be sure, but how does the game actually handle today? Well it handles pretty much like any RTS you would expect. There's two main kind of resources, plastic and electricity. The game has a whole mechanic where once a character or a unit or building dies they drop a little pile of plastic that can be recollected, and that's kind of it doesn't do anything special, it doesn't do anything exciting, it's just a pretty okay RTS. It had simplified the designs in some way, it had tried to reduce the amount of hotkeys that players had, and you only had four hot groups so you could only use one through four, but other than that it was just a simplified RTS. One thing the game does have going for it is some very unique unit designs. The designers of this game very clearly thought about how a child would create or adapt units based on these little plastic toys. I mean, the helicopter's propellers are straws. Your main HQ is a coke can cut in half. Your resource dump pile is a blender. They're very cool looking unit designs to be sure. Okay, but how does the game actually play and wait, can we even play it today? Well, it turns out Army Men RTS is actually available on Steam. Sort of. While the game is available on Steam, it does not appear to run very well on modern machines. If you're on Windows 11, there currently appears to be no way to run the game. Fortunately for you, I am on Windows 10, so let's give it a try. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if it'll just run raw on Windows 10 machine with no... Almost very loud. 3DO. You are seeing the only thing we window. have to fear is fear itself. So apart from issues with attempting to record the game, actually, this game ran fine first time. Quite impressive for a game from 2002. So how does it actually play? Well, after playing it for about an hour or two, I could confidently say, not great. It's missing a lot of the basic features that you would expect from an RTS, which even StarCraft 1 had, which is a game from four years prior. What's immediately most noticeable is the complete lack of hotkeys in the game. In fact, everything in the game is done with a mouse, which I'm guessing is due to the fact this game was designed for PC, PS2, and GameCube, but it makes it very painful to play. What's worse is while I was mashing my keyboard trying to find out what the hotkeys were, of course that meant I hit the dreaded J key. What you've just done can never be taken back. What you've just done can never be taken back. What you've just done can never be taken back. What you've just done can never be taken back. Also, unit pathfinding is impressively bad. Units get caught in each other all the time and will just kind of lock in place. Right on advancing. Got it. On advancing. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Right. Got it. This is even further exacerbated by the fact there's only one air unit in the game, and that air unit is not the greatest. Despite this though, gameplay is actually reasonably fun, and the sound design in this game is immaculate. Maybe I just have a twinge of nostalgia from this game, but 
these voice lines and god this music just incredible So I did have a little bit of a deep dive into whether or not there ever was a competitive scene for Army Men RTS, and whilst it appears like it was occasionally played here and there, the simple answer is no, not really. The game didn't have enough depth or complexity to ever really allow a competitive scene to form, and uh, from what it seems, Russian Guard Towers was just too powerful to ever really be stopped. And so, with little competitive fanfare, that was the end of Army Men RTS. The company that made Army Men, 3DO, declared bankruptcy just a year later in 2003, most of its property being sold off to various different companies including Banco Namkai, and more importantly the Army Men series going to Take-Two Interactive who still hold the IP to this day and haven't really done a lot with it. Having spent a couple of hours having played the game now as an adult, revisiting a game I played as a child, truly made me appreciate how mediocre the game truly was. Despite all that, I loved my time playing Army Men RTS, and I wouldn't change it for the world. It made me realise one very important thing. A game doesn't necessarily have to be good to be memorable. My name is Bandanity. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Thank you, and goodbye. Watch it! Get your knee out of my face! My shoes has gone, you stink! Uh, Ow! What was that? Quit your belly aching, we're on! And I was intending on making this a deep dive on two RTSs, but we are already 11 or 12 minutes into this video, and I want to give the next game as much justice as I've given Army Men RTS. So, if you've enjoyed this content, I hope you'll stick around, because I will probably be making another video on a game from 2005. Um, until then, my name has been Bandanity, I hope you've enjoyed this content, and I will see you all later. Bye bye